figure when 50% of the workforce in the US is female. When the EU has had for 30 years, 40 years, protections, ever-increasing protections, policies to integrate women into, into, into economic society, into positions of economic power, when we can see plainly from the real world around us that, this rea that the reality is changing, the reality that opening government wants to describe you is not the one in which we live today, that we say that absolutely this is a regressive step, it is one which undermines all the progress that we have made thus far, and is one which drives a, a dagger through the heart of the feminist movement, one which gives you a schism from which that feminist movement loses capital and cannot come back. That is our case in opening opposition today. We think that in a world where people are able to be CEOs of some of the largest companies in the world, like Yahoo, Ariba, an agribusiness, a very typically, typically and traditionally male business, we think that is incredibly uh, emblematic of the progress which has been made. We think that by, by having individuals together and united, you're able to you are able to use the common female experience and say, campaign for things like choice, campaign for things like abortion rights, and that those campaigns <coughs> have been extremely successful. We think that the next step is to campaign for more and more progress in the developed world, which he deals with primarily in his speech, to be able to deal with other things, like catcalling on the streets, and we think that by having people use their common experience, you're better able to do that. Okay, so what do we want to do, first of all? First of all, I want to talk about two things that he says that don't fit in. He says that, we, that the vast majority of countries don't have discrimination laws. That's simply untrue. We see that the vast majority, they've improved the situation enormously. But furthermore, we think that in countries that don't yet have those laws, we say that those are the first step in normalizing people's attitudes towards discrimination and ensuring that that discrimination does not continue to happen going forward. We think that secondly, he makes this claim at the end of his speech that, well, magically women will get more money this way and that will end domestic violence. Hang on a second. Domestic violence Point doesn't domestic. happen because you don't have money or aren't economically empowered. You can't be hit. You can still be hit by your husband even if you're economically empowered. The reasons for that is because the, is because that that domestic violence is essentially a product of, so, of social values, of social norms, which we say they actually entrench on their side by saying that you are somehow different because you are a woman Point and need to be treated differently. No, thank you. So let's talk about the harms to women who are actually within these economic zones. Because we say what this policy does is actually suggests that you are not as good as men, that you somehow need protection, that you somehow can't compete and shouldn't expect to compete in, in, in the integrated world that we see around us today, and therefore you should just opt out. We say, firstly, that sends a very damaging message to children who internalize this, not just girls, but also boys, who don't expect that they will have to interact with women in the future, who don't expect that this is something that, 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 that basically that they should have to treat people as equals and think that people have a different, different functions functions in life just, be, just because of how they are born. But that's the exact rhetoric that we're actually trying to fight against in this debate. We think furthermore though, that for the people who do move to those areas, there's a, there's a great sense of tokenism. Any achievements that you do make there can essentially be devalued and taken away from you because you say, well, if there was a man there who could have competed with you for that job, then you wouldn't have actually gotten it. Let's see you out in the, let's see you out in the integrated world and see how, you do, see how you do there. So we don't think this actually, actually creates an economic safe space for those individuals. Point. We think then, he says, well, the the problem in this debate is that very sexist men exist. Well, we think not necessarily. We think very often what you need is individual capital, and that's not increased on this side, because you don't have on, on their side of the house role models to see, who you see interacting with men in an, eco in an economic zone. You don't have, you, you're not able to see, for example, a, another woman asking for a promotion. You're not able to see another woman getting a promotion ahead of a man. Point point those point. are the sorts of things which inspire people to move forward and to actually better themselves. We think furthermore, though, it's not clear from their side of the house whether they ever expect these individuals to reintegrate after, a visit, after, after, after taking taking part in these economic zones, because we say that would be much harder for them, because they don't, don't, they don't have these role models, they don't see this interaction. Furthermore, the world that they'll be moving back into will be one which is more hostile to women. One, because it will have less women in it, because they're trying to incentivize women to go to this other place, but secondly, because they simply never envisage themselves being there in the first place. I want to talk to you now about why this will create an internal schism within the movement. Given that these zones will have managerial positions and hierarchies, why on, on earth are you asserting that there just won't be role models and no one will see women getting promoted? Because I told you that the type of role model is different, because you don't see that role model getting that job ahead of a man. This is what I'm saying. Secondly, because I've already told you that we do have people in those management positions in, in the status quo, yeah, just yeah, not yeah. as many as we like. Note that the trend is that we get more and more all the time, and companies are very eager to increase the number of women that they have involved. So thank you. We think that secondly, in this, what you do is that you divide the interests of, of, of women, right? Firstly, because you say that there are two types of people who are going to, who are going to move into these areas, right? People who are struggling in the status quo and can't, can't get jobs, so are going to move in here and are therefore open and ripe for exploitation. 
We know the second type of people are people who have lots of money, like this guy says in proposition, and, says, and, and, and who therefore can take advantage of new manage, managerial positions that they can't otherwise access. The problem there is that you create, you create, you create a massive difference. There is a massive economic difference, a power differential between those people. So effectively, what you get is people using markets to exploit each other, and you don't get people, you don't, you don't get people interacting on the basis of commonality, but rather you just get the same exploitation that they have in the status quo, except that now only women are allowed, which somehow makes it better. We think that furthermore, though, that what happens with the, when the most privileged get all the top jobs, which is what they seem to want, is that you get the attitude that feminism and special economic zones are really for rich white women. That, that feminism is not something that speaks to all, that feminism isn't something that benefits everybody, and it's simply, this is simply another way of exploiting those who are most marginalized within society. We think that equality skeptics then get to point to your rhetoric and say that, look, you are divided. You are divided. You don't want all, you don't all want the same types of freedom. They get to discredit your movement when there is internal bickering when people say, I want a pay rise from my female employer. We say that then male-dominated employers get to say, look, this isn't because we're discriminatory. This is, just, this is just how the market works. They then get to blame all the discrimination on the market rather than blaming it on, on actual sexism. But we think, furthermore, that this harms people who are outside, outside of these economic zones, too, in a number of ways. First, it's simply economic, economically inefficient to draw a line through society and say only certain people can have these jobs. Why? One, because it means that you don't always get the best person doing that job. Two, it means that you socialize women away who might be very good at doing jobs in the integrated world from actually doing those jobs because they don't feel safe in that world anymore. Three, though, we say that pay, if, demand, if this is very successful and demand for these jobs is really, really high, what's going to happen? Pay plummets. You're going to get paid less for the, as compensation for working in a safer environment and one where you feel more comfortable. How does that ever incentivize you to go and to go and get a job in these areas and to integrate and to actually empower yourself in front of everyone else. Finally, we think it means that the, the, you create different problems in different places and divide the capital that you have. For example, a problem that women have in the workplace now is that they are seen as pushy. We think that that, 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 that continues to be the case in the, un, in the integrated environment. However, that you lose the capital of all the people who work in a women-only environment who no longer experience that difficulty. Therefore, you divide, the, you, divide, you divide the experience of people. You lose the commonality, which is so strong within the feminist, which can be so strong and so effective within any movement seeking equality. For those reasons, we're very, very proud to oppose. Thank you.